I can do a great British accent. I think I'll fit right in. I wish I hadn't have done that. Hi besties, welcome. Today, I hope your day feels like when you see the very first trees start to change colors in the fall and the whole world just takes on a little bit of an orangey tint. That's right, we're talking about fall. Fall is the best season there is, in my opinion. It has so many different facets. We have spooky season, but it's also getting cold, so it's nice and cozy inside. It's the perfect season for reading. And today, I wanna give you all of my fall recommendations. We're talking books, movies, TV shows, all of the fall goodness. First, let's talk about books. a lot of autumnal book recommendations in a few different categories. So let's start with cozy, feel good recommendations. First up, you want to curl up with a snack and some tea and just laugh maybe and just feel warm on the inside. My recommendation is Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin and Hobbes are comics, if you don't know, about Calvin, who's a young boy, and he hangs out with his best friend, who is a stuffed tiger who comes to life when nobody else is around, and that's Hobbes. So it's just their adventures. They never fail to put a smile on my face and just make me feel at home and cozy. They're so easy to read. The humor in these is very smart. There's lots of layers to it. So it can satisfy the child in you and the adult in you all at once if you have an adult in you. Sometimes I don't think I have an adult in me because I do really stupid shit. Also on the feel good side of things, but nonfiction, I would recommend John Green's new book, The Anthropocene Reviewed. This book is John Green's book of essays that he developed after making the podcast, The Anthropocene Reviewed. And basically he just chooses things in the Anthropocene, which is the period of time in which humans have been around, and he gives them reviews. It could be anything from sunsets as a concept to a hot dog eating contest, and he just reviews them. But to me, this book feels sort of autumnal because in autumn, I feel like I really start to notice the little things that bring me joy or the little things that I can find beauty in. And this book is kind of John Green's attempt at finding wonder again. And I always feel the most wonderment and like childlike awe in autumn because the world just feels so beautiful. My favorite two essays in this collection are Sunsets and Harvey. Yeah, I just feel like this is a good way to remind yourself to really appreciate all of the beauty around you, which is easier to do in autumn because there is so much of it. Next, let's talk about Dark Academia. I think it's perfect for reading in the fall time. I feel like so much dark academia takes place in autumn. In my mind, autumn is just the backdrop for all dark academia. So my recommendations in terms of dark academia or things similar are as follows. First is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This book is about a group of college students who are at school at a Shakespeare intense conservatory program. As happens so often in dark academia books, somebody kicks it somebody dies, somebody mysteriously unalives. This book is about the kind of investigation into what happened, but also this cohort of students who are dealing with the aftermath of this trauma. And it's infused with a ton of Shakespeare and it's set in chilly, brisk, like October, November, New England. It's a really, really well done dark academia. Imagine reading this on public transport in October, like, or is she a witch? Maybe, I hope so. Next, I have The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I know The Secret History is her really famous dark academia book, but I haven't read it yet. I'm going to this month. The Goldfinch, I think, has dark academia vibes without necessarily being in an academic setting. This just follows a young boy named Theo. And in the very first chapter of this book, he goes to an art museum with his mother. A bomb goes off in the museum and his mother dies. And as he is making his way out of the museum, Museum, he steals a painting that blew off the wall. So it follows the aftermath of not only his mother's death, but having this missing painting that everybody is searching for. And he has to kind of keep it hidden and keep it secret, tracks him and the painting as he just like goes all over the country and the world and like meets different people. Donna Tartt's very literary 
very detail oriented but emotionally driven work feels very dark academia to me. I couldn't recommend it enough. It's one of my favorite books. It's a chonker. It's a perfect book to just read for very long stretches of time, maybe by a fire. Okay, the next two are not exactly dark academia either, but like they kind of sort of fit. The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater is October in a book. This book is October. It's funny because it actually starts in April and I think it goes through a summer, but it's got tinges of magic. It's got prep school boys. It's got psychics, witchcraft adjacent things in it. It's about this found family of teenagers who go on this quest to find a dead Welsh king. They need the dead Welsh king to grant them a wish. It just has a dark tone that lends itself to being read in autumn. And it's a series. So if you want something a little bit longer that you can read kind of throughout October and the end of the year, it's great because there's four books and then a spin-off. So there's lots of material to read. Okay, and then last on my Dark Academia adjacent list, this, is, this isn't this is Dark Academia, but in my head is a very autumnal book and that's Winger by Andrew Smith. Winger follows Ryan Dean as he goes to a private school. He's on the rugby team. He gets himself into quite a lot of trouble. He's very ignorant about certain things. I really think one of the reasons I liked this book when I read it was because he really learns from his mistakes and he listens to the people around him. Ryan Dean is such a fleshed out character and I remember when I read this it felt like I was hanging out with him. I remember feeling like it was really good for October because it felt kind of like a brisk blustery day. But it's also really funny and hilarious and it has comics in it. I think it's a really good book for Autumn because it balances a lot of different tones. There are some darker elements to this book that I can't really talk about because they're big spoilers. There's also just so much laughter in this book. It's also really quick. It looks really big, but it's it goes really quickly and there's lots of pictures and it's very fast paced. So next, let's talk about horror. First, I gotta shout out my boy Stephen King because he knows how to write a suspenseful freaking book. And my recommendation for Stephen King is Misery. This book follows Paul Sheldon, who is a very famous writer. He writes historical romance novels and the main character in his novels is named Misery, hence the title. It has a double meaning. If you, if you couldn't guess by the fact that it's a violent horror book, Paul Sheldon gets in a car accident and he gets saved by his biggest fan. She is taking care of him and nursing him back to health, but she realizes she doesn't like the way he wants to end his book, basically holds him hostage and tries to force him to write the book the way she wants him to. This book is bone chilling. I remember so many times I was on the edge of my seat. I just had to read so fast because I needed to know what happened. I also really recommend reading this and then watching the movie with Kathy Bates because Kathy Bates is so terrifying in that movie. It's set in a farmhouse in Colorado. This is set mostly during the winter time, but it's perfect for spooky season because it will spook you. Also, in terms of horror, I have a classic horror novel, and that is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This book just has the most October vibe of like any book I've ever read. It's a haunted, creaky house. All of these kind of misfit people who have come together for various reasons are in this house trying to figure out whether it's haunted and haunted by what. They're all kind of dealing with their own internal emotional battles while also trying to figure out this house. And I just think that Shirley Jackson sets a tone unlike any other. She sets horror, creepy, suspenseful tone unlike anyone else I've read thus far. She really made me love haunting themes, haunted houses. I really like ghost stories because of this book and because of her. It's also just very charming which feels like a weird bird for a horror book. It's a classic for a reason. It's just so good. It's not gonna scare the pants off you. So if that's what you're looking for, don't go into this book with that expectation. But if you want an autumn toned book with a creepy edge, this is the book for you. And I'll talk about the show in just a second. Also in terms of spook town, we have to talk about the father of spook himself, Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe's short stories are so great. Shout out to my eighth grade history and English teacher, Mr. Fram, because he made me love Edgar Allan Poe. We have a fire pit in my backyard and we do fires all throughout the fall. We'll just go out there most nights, you know, have people play guitar and sing and do drinks and dinner, etc. Last year, one of my favorite fires, my mom and my cousin were sitting outside and it was Halloween night. We just 
just read each other spooky Edgar Allan Poe stories around the fire. Highly recommend. And then finally, because I can't do a recommendations video without recommending you some Shakespeare, I give you the autumnist of Shakespeare's plays, Macbeth. Macbeth follows our titular character, Macbeth. He receives a prophecy from three witches that he is to be the king of Scotland. To make it come true, he has to do some slightly unethical things. My boy Macbeth is sus, is what I'm trying to say. I saw him vent. This book has witches and curses and magic, but it also has royalty and murder and revenge. It has everything that you need for October and it's set in Scotland and it's blustery, I'm sure. Isn't it always in Scotland? And they wear plaid, probably because Scotland. Also, I played Lady Macbeth and it was my favorite part I've ever played. So I'm quite partial to it. Let's move into movies. The first one is my favorite movie of all time. The best rom-com ever made, When Harry Met Sally. Now people often ask me, is that your favorite movie because the main character's name is Sally? No, it do that doesn't hurt. And I'm also very much like her in a lot of ways that make me insecure. But that's not why. It's because it is truly the greatest rom-com I've ever seen. When Harry Met Sally is about Harry Burns and Sally Albright. They meet because they end up carpooling from Chicago to New York when they move after they graduate college. And then they end up running into each other years later and they just keep kind of bumping into each other throughout life. And the whole movie is an exploration of the question, can men and women just be friends? The thesis statement of the movie, because it's a rom-com, I guess ends up being that they can't be just friends, which I don't agree with, but I do think it's one of the best movies ever made. It's hilarious. This movie never fails to make me laugh. It's Meg Ryan, it's Billy Crystal, Autumn in New York. It's so romantic and sweet and kind, and it's just about the people in your life who you keep coming back to because they feel like home. Also, the soundtrack is like Harry Connick Jr. and Louis Armstrong, and it's like the best jazz songs. It's so good. Next, Dead Poet Society featuring Robin Williams, Ethan Hawke, a young Josh Charles, who I am swooning for in perpetuity. I'll never not swoon for Knox Over Street in that movie. She is going to be mine. <laughs> This movie is dark academia at its finest. This movie follows a group of high school boys in New England in the fall. They go to this prep school called Welton where everything is very by the book. They are very disciplined until Mr. Keating, played by Robin Williams, enters the picture and he is their English teacher and he teaches them about poetry and he infuses this whole class of boys with this love of poetry and they revive something at the school called the Dead Poets Society. It is truly one of my favorite movies of all time. It makes me want to read poetry. It makes me want to read books. Robin Williams is a gem. He will be forever missed. It makes me absolutely sob. It makes me weep. It makes me dehydrated from crying, but it also makes me laugh deep in my belly. Let's talk about horror movies. I have a bone to pick with horror movie creators because they never scare me and I want them to scare me. A good horror movie should make me pee my pants, vomit, and cry. So far, I haven't found one that checks all those boxes, but I have found a lot that I think are really well done anyway. So first, I wanna recommend Scream, which is kind of a classic in the horror genre. It's a slasher movie and it follows these teenagers at this high school and they kind of start to get killed off by this man in a scream mask, which has now become kind of a universal symbol for Halloween. There are some really great twists in it. I don't think it's a super, super scary film. I do think they have some really good jump scares in there. It's such a classic horror movie and I feel like it just really nails the horror movie vibe, even though it is dated and so it's not super super scary probably to an audience watching it now. It has all of the elements that you need for a good horror movie. Also a classic in the horror movie canon. We gotta go back and talk about Hitchcock because Hitchcock movies are brilliant. Probably the most famous Alfred Hitchcock movie is my favorite which is Psycho and in Psycho a young woman stops and stays at the Bates Motel and Norman Bates is a little weird. That's not all, but that's all I'll say in case you've managed to go your whole life without knowing the twist that happens in Psycho. I don't want to spoil it for you. And while, again, I didn't think it was super scary even when I watched it as like an eight-year-old, I love that movie. And I think it is so spooky in the best way, so creepy, even if it's not, you know, terrifying or frightening. Please, please comment down below the horror movies that have scared you the most because I'm on the hunt for movies 
that will actually scare the pants off of me. I really like haunting things. I like slasher, serial killer things. Tell me your recommendations down below, I need them. In terms of television shows, I've got a few recommendations. one is Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls is the most autumnal show. I feel that there is. Stars Hollow is always in autumn. I don't know how that works, but somehow that little town has existed on an entirely different temporal plane in which it is only ever autumn. They're always in the best sweaters. They're always drinking coffee and it just feels so cozy and homey. It never fails to put a smile on my face and make me feel warm and fuzzy inside, which is truly what autumn is about. I would also recommend Sex Education. I'm currently obsessed with this show. I love it so, so much. It feels very autumnal to me for a couple reasons. One, the landscape is just always so beautiful and they always have their little jackets and sweaters on. So I just assume it's a little bit nippy outside. It's a British show and the basic plot of the show is that the main character, Otis, his mom is a sex therapist, so he has grown up learning a lot about sex and the psychology behind sex. When our other main character, Maeve, finds out about this, she proposes that they start a sex clinic at their high school and sell sex advice for money. This show is one of the most diverse shows I've ever seen in terms of sexuality, gender identity, race, ability, you name it. Just, it's all over the board. You see people of all different kinds, which makes it feel like real life, and they all actually seem like teenagers. Teenagers. To me, it is just such a comfort watch and such a feel-good watch. It makes me absolutely crack up and I think the acting is some of the best young acting I've seen in any TV show I've ever watched. Let's briefly touch on horror television shows because horror television shows are rapidly becoming more and more common and boy am I thankful for it. The first one is one of my favorite shows of all time, The Haunting of Hill House. The plot of The Haunting of Hill House, it's in a dual timeline. The first timeline happens when the Crane family moves into Hill House. The Crane family consists of mom and dad and then their five kids. They're kind of exploring this house for the first time, trying to fix it up and things start to get weird but it also follows the kids when they are adults dealing with the aftermath of living in this house dealing with the aftermath of some very very deep familial trauma it is so brilliantly done they give you tiny pieces of what's coming and what's next and you have to piece it together but you also continue to learn more and more as you go and things reveal themselves to you it just feels like you're walking in a maze and they give you enough crumbs to make you feel like you got it and you know where you're going and then you hit a wall. This show is scary, but it also does such a good job of using supernatural like ghost haunting elements to highlight the scariest parts of being a human being. There are a couple reveals in this show that give me chills every time I watch it. And it's just some of the most brilliant storytelling I've ever seen on TV. And every time I watch it, I notice things I didn't before. All right. That does it for this video, folks. I hope that I have given you some recommendations that you can take into this autumnal season and enjoy. I know that I will be taking some of my own recommendations. I really wanna hear what your autumn recommendations are for all of these categories because I'm in desperate need of autumn vibes. Like this video if you too think that fall is the greatest season. As always, I'll link my Instagram and my Goodreads down below so that you can follow me and hang out with me there. I love talking to you all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that your autumn is off to a great start and that it continues to be comfy and cozy and warm and spooky if you're into that sort of thing. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It means so much to me and it helps me out so, 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 so very much. And in case you haven't heard it today, I love you.